Okay, so we saw Matthew right here, and we're going to uh, be talking about the stories making the headlines uh, with him, and also uh, Beverly Turner very shortly. Uh, Simon Calder, first of all, because Matthew, we want to talk about the um, the, the, the situation with, with holidays, and people get their hopes up, Simon, and then all shot again. Uh, it's the Balearics we're talking about, first of all, and um, thousands of people say they may now have to cancel their summer holidays. What's going on in the Balearics? Well, yes, and you might be forgiven for thinking that here in beautiful Carlisle, I'm actually in lovely Barcelona. But no, uh, Barcelona, of course, like the Spanish mainland on the amber list, which means that you have to quarantine for 10 days when you come back. Grazie. Um, in, in fact, this is now going to extend to the uh, islands of Mallorca, Menorca and Ibiza. Uh, you'll recall that um, just two weeks ago, they entered the green list, which means no quarantine. That's all changed. So 4 a.m. on Monday morning, the 19th of July, if you haven't got one of these to show that you're lucky enough to have been vaccinated twice by the um, uh, NHS, then if you're over 18, you're going to have to self-isolate. What we've seen, predictably enough, is a rush to get flights booked to come back. I've been watching overnight some prices increasing nine times what they were yesterday yeah. afternoon yeah. as people but, bundle in trying to get but back. Si Simon, just... Simon, the thing is, and I'd like to bring Beverly and Matthew in on this as well, one minute it's green, next minute it's amber, next minute you're, you're in quarantine, then you're not, and whatever. Could you blame people, can you blame people for saying, count me out? Yeah, well, absolutely. I've, I've ruled myself out. I know lots of people who'd like to have a holiday abroad but aren't. Um, some of the people that, I mean, Julia hartley brewer has gone away on holiday. She's going to be caught, I think, in this at the moment. It's a pandemic. It's a global pandemic. Things change quickly. That said, I do have a lot of sympathy for people out there because it's, you know, it's 15 days. You know? You're told it's safe to go. You pay your money. You get your tests, which are all very expensive. You go out there on your holiday and it changes again. But, but Beverly, we were... Possible. People are always told this could change. Yeah. Always. Ab absolutely. It's, it's not remotely surprising uh, to me. I, I, like Matthew, I haven't booked a holiday this year. I've, I'm not bothered about going away. I'll, I'll maybe do something here. Everything's booked now. Um, but it's, you just got to wonder what, why? Like, what is, what is going on here? It does defy a certain logic. It's, it's cruel uh, for people to change the goalposts again. It's cruel for all the young people because... I don't know whether it's coincidental that it, it's the Balearic Islands, it's Ibiza, which appeal yeah. to the young people who might have some concerns about having a vaccine at this stage and think it might be a little safer to wait. Is it coincidental that those are the, the guys who are now going to have to make a very difficult decision? Um, and, and is there a, a green agenda? Like, will we ever? I'm genuinely not sure we'll ever fly again in the way yeah, that we've, we've all enjoyed Simon, doing that, over... that brings me... How the heck do you run a travel business mm. in any form whatsoever? Um, we hear now that British Airways are saying because of this ping, track and trace business, they've lost so much staff, they're saying, please drop off your luggage a day before you fly at Heathrow. Now, if you live, doesn't matter where you live, Colchester, oh, we'll just go to Heathrow the night before and I'll pop off They'll pick them up, actually. They'll, they'll send people up, to pick they? them up for a wow. relatively... I mean, it's, I think, £20 a bag, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, Simon, how on earth does the business respond to this? On, off, up, down, yes, no, green, number. It's absolutely impossible, Eamon. Summer is slipping away. Just north of the border here in Carlisle, of course, they're pretty much halfway through the school holidays. Um, people, families in England and Wales, um, typically schools breaking up um, in, in a week or so, they simply cannot book with any confidence. And this is causing massive uh, concerns in the travel industry. I've been talking to one or two businesses who say basically they are going into hibernation. They cannot see any way of sensibly selling holidays this summer. Sure, Bulgaria has just gone onto the uh, green list. It's a gorgeous country. Um, but how, how can you be sure about that? Croatia are on the green watch list. So like uh, Mallorca, Minorca and Ibiza, suddenly in two weeks' time, you yeah. could find it's all changed. Desperate times for the travel industry and also for the many, many people who are just aching to see loved ones around the world. Yeah. And they equally cannot commit because they've got work, 
They've got family commitments here. They can't afford to go into quarantine. And goodness me, and the rest of us just hoping for a holiday. Well, it's so long I've been, uh, I've been away, I think my passport <laughs> might have expired. Sam, cool. can I just ask you one thing before you let you go? What about people watching who are here but have booked to go? Gosh to the Balearic Islands. What do they do now? OK, I've been uh, ringing round the uh, travel companies this morning. So here's, here's what's happening. If you happen to be uh, vaccinated by the NHS, you've waited two weeks, then you can still go. Effectively, from Monday morning, amber becomes green for those of us who are lucky enough to have had both jabs. And for a lot of people, that will be absolutely fine. If not, well, Jet2 have said, uh, a big tour operator, of course, that if you've booked to go to a... Uh, to an amber country and you cannot quarantine, then you will be able to uh, uh, get a full refund. Um, they've also, sadly, cancelled all their holidays to Turkey, up to and including the 11th of August. They say it's still on the uh, red list, which means hotel quarantine when you get back. Okay. They can't see that changing before then. Um, so tens of thousands of dreams wrecked and um, yeah. the travel industry in even more disarray, I'm afraid. Simon, okay, Simon, well, thank, thank you. you. Simon. Thanks for bringing this up today. Appreciate it. Um, Beverly and Matthew. Now, there's um, a big story, and it's on many of the, the front pages um, today, and basically you have snack tax to fight fat crisis. Um, heard it all before. Um, this, this study, will it be implemented? Will it be acted upon by the government? But my point is this, Matthew. If it's bad for us, and they say there's so many things bad for us, why do they allow it to happen? Huh. Why are they poisoning us? What part does the food lobby have on this? This just, this just gets me. If Frosties are killing me, stop selling them. It's a very interesting question as to why they do it. Lots of theories about whether salt and sugar sort of stimulate us in certain ways. It's almost like in a sort of addictive response, we crave it. What's really interesting about Henry Dimbleby's uh, report, he runs the Leon chain, sort of healthy, quick, quick meals, is all the newspapers are just picking on certain bad news stories. Yeah, Let me, yeah. So we had the sugar tax on fizzy drinks, came in in 2018. Consumption of sugar from fizzy drinks fell 35%. Remember, the sugar drinks are more expensive if they contain more than seven teaspoons of sugar. But sales of fizzy drinks, they went up. 15% because the manufacturers, rather than risk losing sales, voluntarily cut the levels of sugar. And I see this, if the government does adopt this report, that the same thing will happen, that companies that load food with sugar and salt will voluntarily cut it rather than see their products become more expensive. Some products like jam will be more expensive, but they're, they're saying the sort of offset of that would be the good news in schools, they, there's a call for a massive expansion of free school meals from currently just under, uh, for families earning less than 8,000 a year to families earning less than 20,000 a year. So any concerns that higher, more expensive food will mean less food in our bellies, in the, in the, in the poorer people and the less, uh, less well nourished, should be offset by better school meals. So I think broadly, it's all good. And Beverly. also, Beverly, they're saying that this, this national food strategy, they're, they're suggesting that the money could then be used for GPs to then... Yeah, but that's nonsense, darling. Well, yeah, they what do you're not saying. ring fence money. It's like saying but your road tax goes saying. towards roads. But that's it what does... they're saying. GPs darling, they're saying it, but it, it doesn't could. happen. It's a recommendation. But it it's does not happen, Matthew. You no, know it, it will not happen. It will go on defence spending or yeah. something else. Right, so it will not happen. I, I'm infuriated by this story today, almost more than any of the others, because we receive such, such mixed messages about how healthy we are meant to be, how much we are meant to move, and what we are meant to eat. This last 12 months, it has never been harder for us to be fit, to eat well, because the gyms were closed, the pools were closed, we were ordering takeaways because we couldn't go out to eat. We've got, we were already in an obesity pandemic and it is now worse 12 months later. So I feel how dare the government now come and say that they're going to tax foods, which is going to affect the poor, just like we we're saying about the travel, it will become a two tier society and, and taxing the poor, although I do believe the school meals is, is a great thing, help one, at least one healthy meal a day for these kids. But let's put some money into ability to exercise. Yeah. You know, we've got leisure centres that aren't going to open after this pandemic. I think it was estimated like 20% of swimming pools will never reopen because they can't. So this is about m getting ourselves and particularly our kids, get them moving as much. Stop obsessing about their fat yeah. and sugar and get them out the door and get them moving. Well, I, I agree with both our contributors here that um, stop taxing these things, change them. Yeah. 
change them. Yeah. And also education, because, you know, you do have personal yeah. responsibility of what yeah. you eat. Darling, you have personal darling, responsibility you have of what no you feed your children. You walk around a supermarket and you're just given... You think you're doing the right thing, your microwave meal, your processed food. It is, if it's poisonous, if it's poisoning yeah. us, change it. But there is a fruit and veg aisle. Darling, there thing. is a food food's lobby alcohol. that I'll, controls I'll... government. There's a food lobby here which is getting away with poisoning people. Why is it happening? Also, it's going, this you is, have this... to educate. But at a young age, you have to educate children right back into primary schools about healthy Don't food, sell it. cooking. I'm, I, I, we're all right, aren't we? I mean, I, the most interesting question is the one right at the beginning is why is this happening? Why do they fill products with more sugar and salt than we need than is good for yeah. us? And I can't give you a clear answer. More addictive than addictive. cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, That's the only, yeah. you know, then I was thinking maybe I'm sounding kind of cranky and conspiratorial. Right. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. Okay. It's a good talking point.